record okay so hare krishna welcome welcome to our course overview of gita today is our 67th class which is the workshop on recently concluded chapter 18 and this is uh, the workshop we are doing on chapter 18 where we do lot of uh, a, a kind of revision in the form of a quiz where participants are given this quiz they work on the quiz and then we discuss the answers participants also uh, participates uh, participate in answering the question so let us begin with our mangalacharan prayers om ajnanati mirandhasya gyanan jana shalakaya chakshurun militam yena tasmay shri gurave namaha shri chaitanya manobhishtam sthapitam yena bhutale swayam roop kadamayam dadati swapadandikam वंदेहम श्री गुरो श्री युता पद कमल श्री गुरो न वैष्णवाम साग्रजात सह गण रघुनाथान्वितम तम सजीव साइत सवधूत पिजन सहित कृष्ण चैतन्य देव श्रीराधाकृष्ण पादान सह गण ललिता श्री विशाखान्विता हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंधो दीनबंधो जगत्पते गोपेश गोपिका कांता राधा कांता नमोस्तुते तप्त कांचन गौरांगी श्रीराधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानुसुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय वंशाकुभ्य कृपा सिंधुभ्य पति पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासादि गौरभक्त वृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे सो वी विल स्टार्ट स्टेट अवे विद द क्विज एंड लेट मी ऑल्सो क्लैरिफाई कपल ऑफ थिंग्स वन थिंग इज दैट इन दि क्लास टूडे i have not kept the practical application section which generally we keep uh, in our workshops and also the shloka recitation and the reason was that today in the class we have 25 questions to discuss which will take uh, some time and in order to keep the class uh, reasonably uh, short and uh, 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 so I, i i decided not to keep those two sections what i plan to do is i plan to do uh, Uh, uh the the feedback form that i have sent for the geeta classes in general so we will do that uh, discussion in the next class and in the next class i will try to accommodate uh, these two sections of shloka recitation as well as the practical application section so we will do those two sections in the next class so let us begin with our quiz so we had 25 questions uh, and this time the question number 1 i have i realized later it was name and place so we will start with question number 2 which is actually directly related with the uh, with the with the chapter <clears throat> so this question was what is sanyas what is tyag and which one is better this was uh, in the beginning a question asked by arjuna and krishna lord krishna responds to it so let us hear from the participants what they have recorded as their answers on this question what is sanyas sanyas is giving up activities based on material desires very nice okay and tyaga is this uh, giving up the fruits of all the activities okay yeah. very good tyaga is giving up fruits of the all the activities so yeah. one is giving activity and another one is giving the fruit fruit so yeah. which one is better tyaga so, tyaga is, the... is better tyaga is better actually what uh, uh, what well this answer is correct uh, i don't uh, i don't deny that but <coughs> depends upon how do you how do we understand both sanyas and tyag so the the way lord krishna has uh, taken up this uh, topic in bhagavad gita he has mentioned that sanyas actually is giving up the activity but uh, before giving up the activity one has to become quite trained in giving up the fruit of the activity so uh, that is what actually sanyas means and tyaga actually means giving up the fruit of the activity so practically sanyas and tyag is one and the same thing so that is how we have presented this answer 
but uh, from the external point of view lord krishna has recommended tyaga uh, over sanyas in the sense that tyaga or karma yog in general is more practical to do so he is saying that okay tyaga is is better than sanyas so that if you explain it like that so you, we, we can accept that answer as well but from the internal consciousness point of view there is no difference between sanyas and tyag the ultimate goal is to actually renounce the uh, result of the activity or or the fruitive mentality we have to renounce so that is w- what is common in both so sanyas means give up the activities based on material desires which actually means fruitive mentality and tyag means give up results of all the activity which again also means fruitive mentality and which one is better uh, there is no difference between sanyas and tyag and real real renunciation as lord krishna has mentioned is actually giving up the fruitive mentality not the activity itself so sanyas actually involves both giving up the fruitive mentality and when you are really confident about that you are you have given it up well then you don't you either give up the activity or don't give up the activity it doesn't matter so you can practically uh, from qualification perspective you can even give up the activity also so that is what it means so sanyas here the way shila prabhupad has uh, translated it he has translated it as sanyas means the renounced order of life like we have brahmacharya grahast vanaprastha and sanyas so these are the uh, four ashramas so sanyas prabhupad has translated in his purport as renounced order of life so sanyas that that's how he has So, so prabhu ji you also explained that like sanyasa is means you are doing something neg- you are negating something correct you are giving up something but mm-hmm. tyaga means you are not giving up something but you are advancing in a positive kind of uh, advancement in the spiritual yeah. path correct? so that is actually now you are differentiating based on the uh, the physical uh, uh, the way people actually uh, do activities in the sanyas ashram and and maybe in the karma yoga section or maybe in in uh, as a karma yogi versus gyan yogi mm-hmm. what is the difference so gyan yogi actually is renounced mm-hmm. and why and why he can renounce because he has given up these fruitive mentality already so now he can full time engage into his uh, Correct. Correct. and then tyaga is uh, tyaga means uh, you can be in the activity or in the active life uh, uh, karma yoga actually means you can you can be there actively involved in the social life and all that but while being involved in social life you don't act in a fruitive way you mm-hmm. do things as as duty uh, without attachment to the fruits of results so that is what tyaga means yeah so tyaga actually gives you a, a license or maybe it allows you to remain in the social uh, welfare or social activities and uh, uh, but change the mentality but change the mentality how you how you yeah. relate to things so like for example bhishma pitamaha he was uh, in in one sense he was like a sanyasi because he was n- not married he was actually living in a royal palace but doing all the kingly activities doing all these activities uh, but still he was doing it as matter of duty he did not accept the throne or although he was he could have he could have got the throne but he did not accepted it and he he did the all these things only for the uh, as a matter of duty similarly in in the in chapter number 3 lord krishna also gives this example of maharaj janak that maharaj janak was actually uh, uh, had already given up the fruitive mentality but he was doing the all the activities of a king uh uh as a matter of duty and even if you uh read the conversation between maharaj uh, lord sri ramachandra and uh, sugriv so when sugriv's brother bali is uh, killed by lord ram then sugriv feels lot of uh, depression he feels very morose and he uh, he goes to lord ramachandra and mentions that my dear lord i want to renounce i want to go to the forest i just want to leave everything i just don't want to be here and then lord ramachandra says that uh, uh, who better uh, king can be uh, than a sanyasi 
see if a if a king has developed this mentality or this mindset of a sanyasi of renounce of renouncement then that would be the best possible king because king has to act in the welfare of the people so all those examples are there in our shastra which which actually uh, illustrate this point thank you prabhu okay let us move to the next question what among the following should be encouraged sacrifice meant for one's purification sacrifice is meant for achieving the lord <clears throat> charity given to a suitable person and all of the above all of the above all of the above yes so that is very good uh, very correct answer this was, this was based on the purport for this uh, fifth verse of 18th chapter where shila prabhupada has given all these statements in the purport so all of the above is correct and uh, yagya dan tapa so these words yagya dan and tapa lord krishna has repeatedly mentioned in uh, in bhagavad gita where he has regularly emphasized that uh, yagya dan and tapa should never be given up ha huh? like we have been discussing this topic about tyaga and sanyas so when uh, uh, sanyas means renouncing the activities so lord krishna is saying you should not renounce these activities sacrifice yagya dan and tapa this should never be given up and then uh, he goes on to say that yagya dan tapa actually should be done in mode of goodness and he gives all that example later on in this in this chapter so the correct answer is correct uh, uh, all of the above sacrifice charity in austerity so yagya dan and tapa should be performed in following consciousness this is based on sixth verse with attach with detachment with expectation of results as a matter of duty with Will. attachment uh, without Will. expectation of results as a matter of duty Take without there. attachment without expectation of results to achieve success without attachment without expectation of results as a matter of duty b d d so one d. vote is for d and one c. vote i so one c, is c. c d d it is d. d d c and b i hear three responses so who have uh, so one so uh, so with attachment so with attachment if we do uh, that is not uh, what the recommendation of the lord is without expectation of result is correct as a matter of duty is correct so b is not the right one so c c means without attachment is okay without expectation of result is also okay and to achieve success so to achieve success is not something which is uh, same as matter as a matter of duty so only if we are going to achieve success then only we do uh, sacrifice charity or charity that is something which is uh, yeah that is something not good so we d is the correct answer without attachment without expectation of result as a matter of duty now let me also read the verse uh, translation all these activities should be performed without attachment etanya pi tu karmani sangam tyaktva sangam tyaktva is the meaning of uh, sang means attachment sangam tyaktva means detachment or without attachment phalani cha phalani means with any fruit ha uh, expectation of result and then kartavya niti me partha kartavya as a matter of duty so these are the three words uh, given in uh, verse number 6 so we should do it like that correct answer is d without attachment without expectation of result and as a matter of duty <clears throat> what characterizes tyaga in mode of goodness okay this is a i think a theoretical question no options are available so 18.9 what would you say what characterizes tyaga in mode of goodness anything that is uh, sacrifice without material association yes okay mm -hmm. correct mata ji without any right. expectation without any without. expectation without attachment actually without attachment yeah. to the fruit sense of doership expectation uh, i mean 
you are going okay. to get some result or you will do right. some activity to plan for to achieve some result but uh, there is a difference between uh, planning for getting some result versus getting attached to the result so when we are attached to the result uh, we are actually biased uh, our our actions are biased and and the end result if the result is good then we become happy if the result is bad then we become sad but if we do it as a matter of duty then the satisfaction is there that we completed our duty result may come or may not come that is actually the lord will decide so thank you uh, yeah so what we are saying is renounces all material association and all attachment to the fruit karya mithyeva yat karma niyatam kriyate arjuna sangam tyaktva so again the word sangam tyaktva has come without at sangam tyaktva phalam chaiva sangam tyaktva phalam chaiva ha Uh, detached from the fruits of the result so that is what tyaga in mode of goodness is tyaga in mode of goodness renounce the fruit of one's work not the work itself and prescribe duties executed out of duty without attachment to the result so these are the two main uh, items for uh, tyaga in mode of goodness <clears throat> so let us go to the sixth question Uh, sixth question is on verse number eleven. Is it possible for embodied beings to give up activities altogether? No. 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 Yes. Yeah. Very good. So this is actually has been the fundamental reasoning. Uh, yes. No. Yeah. yeah. So hmm. the correct answer is no. And and why I kept this question is because this has been the fundamental reasoning of Lord Krishna. that soul is always active soul wants to do something it is it cannot become inactive and uh, if you don't act uh, as per your uh, as, cup, uh, as per your modes of nature as per your prescribed duties actually you will you will act in a different way you will act in a wrong way and that will lead you to bondage so uh, that's what uh, uh, the reason is and where other at other places lord krishna discussed this in 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 bhagavad gita if you open chapter number 3 the fifth verse in the fifth verse fifth verse yeah in the fifth verse it is saying nahi kaschit kshanam api nahi kaschit kshanam api jatu tishtatya akarma krat jatu tishtat tishtatya akarma krat akarma krat means no action नहीं कश्चित क्षण नॉट इवन फॉर अ मोमेंट अ लिविंग एंटिटी कैन रिमेन इन एक्टिव सो ही इज एक्चुअली गिविंग दिस रीजन लॉर्ड कृष्णा इज गिविंग दिस रीजन टू अर्जुना दैट इफ यू आर सेइंग दैट यू विल गो टू द फॉरेस्ट एंड रिनाउंस एवरीथिंग बट माय डियर सर प्लीज नोट दैट न तू अपी क्षण न ही कश्चित क्षण एंड एंड देन if you go to the forest because you are not fully purified your kshatriya nature will bound you to act in some some kind of a uh, war or some kind of a fight you will pick up some fight in the forest and that will lead the bondage to you so that's what uh, but the reason i kept this question was this is the fundamental reasoning for lord krishna to encourage arjuna to do karma yoga or bhakti yoga and that is the reason he gives him Uh, to say that these two path of yogas are actually better than sanyas or uh, like dhyan dhyan yog or gyan yog <clears throat> okay uh, five factors of action yeah this is another very good this is i think the in my humble opinion this is the uh, the difficult question in the in the quiz uh, so you may probably find the answer in the in the book as as prabhupad would have explained but it is a little bit of a, a question which which uh, which sometimes is not easily understandable so explain why lord krishna brings up the topic of five factors of action in verse 1813 also name the five factors of action in 1814 so how would you explain any action bhavu yes any action must have some reaction Mm-hmm. And um, 
and uh, the, the, that how is that karma yogi you know with the spirit of renunciation mm-hmm. avoids bondage to karma karmic reactions mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. actually what happens is the mm-hmm. you know when we do the start doing the work mm-hmm. we know that our uh, body is involved senses are involved Correct. all the other factors you know karta mm-hmm. karanam chesta daiva Mm-hmm. so when we do that all these four things we are definitely aware mm-hmm. but only thing is you know when uh, there are two things in one one is the other thing is the the uh, the, uh, the maya the illusion mm-hmm. that is the other aspect of uh, lord krishna mm-hmm. and uh, the other the, the favorable aspect of krishna both are involved suppose mm-hmm. you are into getting into me, 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 this mode uh, then mm-hmm. definitely you are complete you know the action will be according to the mode in which you are placed there mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so i bara say uh, mm-hmm. if you if the, if the krishna is lord is if you go do krishna conscious activity mm-hmm. then definitely you will not have any reaction but mm-hmm. you will have reaction when you do the fruity activity according to the modes of nature the fruity activity fruity mode in which you are present at. so mm-hmm. the karmic reaction is that if, uh, if uh, this thing is if you feel all is uh, not involved whereas if lord is involved there will not be any karmic reaction correct. that's why lord correct. krishna wants to bring the factors yeah, this very, is my explanation. very correct answer and that was a very excellent answer very nice prabhu ji you actually hit the hit the hammer directly on the nail head there was absolutely no uh, i would fully agree and endorse your answer and that's why uh, see the uh, the background behind this question and that is why th- the flow of geeta is very important uh, the reason uh, how the discussion goes and builds up in bhagavad geeta at a particular section and and chapter uh, this question actually is connected to that and uh, uh, that is the reason i kept this question so arjuna primarily is confused between uh, whether he should act that is he should go for war or he should renounce he should take sanyas and the reason he is giving is that uh, if i if i uh, uh, go for war there will be killing there will be reactions and i will be bound in the chain of reactions so that's what he is giving that reasoning now lord krishna brings up this topic Uh, again in chapter 18 he is talking about renunciation and tyaga uh, whether i should do activity or whether i should uh, not do the activity so lord krishna is explaining these five factors of action uh, and uh, uh, arjuna might be thinking that any action re- involve any reaction so how do i understand that if i go for war there will be no reaction so that is where lord krishna by taking help of sankhya yoga or vedanta vedanta means or sankhya means analysis analysis means uh, you have a bigger body of knowledge you break down that bigger body of knowledge into different different factors so here he gives what is action and what are the five factors of action and by explaining by doing that analysis by doing that analytical study you with the help of sankhya he is explaining that these are the five factors of actions my dear arjuna and he says that adhisthana karta karanam uh, cheshtha and ultimately he gives fifth reason as daivam so he is saying that there are five factors of action that any activity that gets completed or or you become successful in completing any activity actually involve these five things but the ultimate factor is daivam daivam means the lord the parmatma and uh, if you don't consider parmatma uh, feature in your activity in your action in your decision making then potentially you will uh, you will act according to your your uh, vikratis Uh, you will probably act according to your vikratis and that will lead you into bondage so he was trying to explain to arjuna that action alone is not cause of any reaction but in what consciousness you do that action is cause of bondage and if you do that action in the consciousness understanding that actually the supreme sanctioner is supreme lord krishna then you don't get any reaction so that is how he is giving a very technical uh, and a very analytical answer to the doubts arjuna is presenting before lord krishna 
it's a very technical answer because sankhya is analysis and analysis is technical in nature in general so that's what uh, uh, lord krishna actually brings up this topic of sankhya here and actually this topic originally uh, lord krishna has brought in chapter number 5 so like i was mentioning chapter number 18 is actually the summary of whole gita so in chapter number 5 he has already started that discussion i think from verse number 13 onwards till maybe verse number 16 where he says uh, jiva prakriti and uh, and parmatma these are the three factors of any any activity so, so here he is giving five factors now now let us discuss uh, so this question uh, we can discuss like this any active any activity performed must have some reaction by citing five factors of action lord krishna explains how person in krishna consciousness is free from reaction among five factors the fifth cause is parmatma who is the ultimate controller a person acting under his direction does not accrue any reaction so working under the direction of the lord practically what does it mean for us working as per the scriptures or working as per maybe some senior person who knows the scripture well and like the concept of spiritual master accepting a guru becoming the disciple so what does guru disciple means the guru disciple means that the guru is a person who understand the scripture who understand the will of the lord by heart he understand it very deeply so that is how we accept a teacher who will guide us in these times of need when the modes or when we are trying to act according to our vikrutis like arjuna was going to do so uh, for all practical reason it boils down to uh, for us uh, scriptures following scriptures and following the spiritual master and the five factors of action are adhisthana karta karanam cheshtha and daivam so adhisthana here is prakriti like the body we have uh, like i gave you the example of cricket pitch uh, so uh, the body of the uh, batsman and and the cricket pitch actually so cricket pitch is external to the body but it also plays the role like you might have been seeing cricket matches then sometimes the pitch behaves in a very different way and then the uh, some pitches are very dull some pitches are very fast some pitch spin a lot so like that so adhisthana is the prakriti karta is actually the spirit soul uh, and karanam karanam uh, again is prakriti the senses this is also adhisthana and karanam all both are prakriti cheshtha cheshtha is actually a combination of uh, uh, the super, uh, the soul as well as prakriti cheshtha is both the combination of soul and prakriti the cheshtha means the the soul has to desire and do the practice or do the uh, cheshtha uh, uh, for example like if if we want to uh, learn some art so we have to practice a lot so that is some something like cheshtha which is both prakriti as well as the soul and daivam is actually parmatma so the three factors that has been mentioned in chapter number 5 have uh, uh, have now been mentioned into 5 in chapter number 18 but the same message has been repeated here in 18th chapter okay <clears throat> that was a very good question uh, and then this one eighth number name the three motivators and three constituents of action so what would you respond to that no yeah. motivators is jnanam jnana jayam and parijnata and parijnata very good jnana jayam and parijnata very good so wh- what are the constituents of action karanam karma karma karta ha karanam karma, karma. Uh, karma. Uh, karma and karta and very karta. very very good and uh, how would you explain this why again lord krishna is bringing this uh, in in discussion here after explaining after explaining uh, five factors of action uh, the new concept the lord starts is uh, these uh, the three motivators and the three constituents so what is the connection between these between these uh, uh, topics <clears throat> motivations in the conception say Mm-hmm. where is uh, the three the, you know the action stage is the uh, next one yeah. so the, when the conception stage is there mm-hmm. at the mm-hmm. time point of time you also i mean took the example of uh, engineer supervisor correct you correct. gave that uh, this, yeah, yeah yeah that is the yeah so one is the say any action that we do uh, for example we want to 
make a house we want to build a house so it will start in the mind first of all first of all person has to think or have to uh, uh, get that idea that i want to build a house then he will acquire the knowledge to build the house uh, he will learn he will learn probably how to mix cement uh, how to construct a house how to dig a foundation uh, and then and then he will build the house so that is what it is so what does gyanam means gyanam actually means learning how to mix the cement how to dig the foundation and so on gyayam means object of knowledge object of knowledge is building the house so why why he is taking that knowledge taking that knowledge to build the house now what is the difference between knowledge and object of knowledge what is the difference between knowledge and object of knowledge for example <clears throat> when we study our object of study is uh, maybe we want to become successful or we want to uh, uh, go to america for example maybe for that matter we want to go to america huh? and and going to america we are studying here and and in in study maybe we are studying the book of physics so we are getting the knowledge of physics that is the gyanam <coughs> but our object is but our goal is to go to america so that is the difference between gyanam and gyayam so the object of knowledge so knowledge for example i gave the example of engineering so in engineering you might be studying physics or mathematics or maybe some engineering specific subjects so that is knowledge and object of knowledge is that you want to become skillful as engineer you want to have that skill and then parigyata means the person who does that the karta <clears throat> then uh, this is the uh, conceptual part and then the constituents of action now the you are you are doing something you are executing it so three constituents of action are karnam karma and karta karnam is actually what karnam is uh, instruments instruments uh, or you can say senses we will use hands we will use eyes uh, uh, while doing the activity karma is maybe the work that we will do and karta is actually doer <clears throat> so this is karnam karma and karta this is at the time when you are uh, doing some problem solving and, and and things like that so engineer studies uh, he ga- he becomes uh, he ga- gains the skill of engineering and uh, uh, he then utilizes his senses his his body his hands legs and etc to maybe do the problem solving uh, actual problem solving when it comes to uh, to his desk and karta and parigyata is same doer and knower that is the same <clears throat> so now, now my question was what is the connection between uh, the previous section five factors of action and the three motivators and three constituents of action why the lord after describing five factors of action start to discuss about uh, three motivators and three constituents what is the link so the link is <clears throat> in the in the five factors of action uh, lord krishna has tried to explain uh, ultimately yes, that every 5 into 3 yeah he will condense 5 yeah. into 3 that is uh, or or these 6 into 3 he will condense these 6 into 3 uh, but why yeah, yeah, yeah. but why kishan is a kutta sorry no, then why you call me a kutta because they are interrelated and interdependent yeah that's what i want to understand what is the relation <laughs> that's good hmm? question <laughs> to explain because there is a there is a flow there is a flow and the lord is bringing these topics he is not he is not explaining why he is taking up that topic after one after the previous topic why is he is not explaining but the acharyas have decodified that things for us okay so that's what i want to say because he want to establish he is actually breaking this item called action into multiple ways so previously he, he explained it in terms of five factors of action now he is explaining in terms of motivators and constituents and ultimately he will say that each of these constituents he will then these six constituents he will then uh, uh, squeeze into three and for, for these each of these three constituents he will tell that uh, the gyanam is in three modes 
jnana mean three modes mean mode of goodness mode of passion mode of ignorance and then he will say gaya mean three uh, sorry he will say uh, karma in three modes and then the performer of three modes now the, the the point the lord is trying to make is that for any action that you are doing you are uh, you are helplessly bound by modes you are helplessly bound by modes and how do you recognize that you are bound by modes these are the this is how i am breaking it up and this is how these are the symptoms uh, for you to understand that you are bound by modes and and when you understand that you are bound by modes then you should understand that you are you are not actually acting as per the will of the lord so ahankar the the factor of ahankar uh, which means that we do it we do things as per our own whims and fancies that's how the lord is trying to connect the topics uh, uh, here ultimately and then in 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 the 40th verse he ultimately says that actually there is no one who is who is free from modes of materiality so so the short answer is in order to uh, develop this topic that each each action that you do actually is bound by modes and that's how he kind of uh, once again analyzes it and and explains it in in bhagavad gita <clears throat> i hope that was clear or or was it confusing a little bit confusing if you could just summarize it again prabhu okay mother ji see so, uh, arjuna uh, uh, uh. Prabhu, one more thing. So you mentioned uh, how it is connected. So just just wanted to understand the connection once again. Mm. Sorry. Yeah, just the yeah. last part. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So the connection is Prabhu ji. Uh, say when we don't act according to the Supreme Lord's will, hmm, how do we act? We act by our uh, by the modes that we have, by the prakriti we have, by the sobhava we have. So prakriti can also be something like. Uh, 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 pravritti and nivritti uh, pravritti and 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 vasana pravritti means uh, our talents and vasana means our inferior desires like kama krodha lobha moha etc right now yeah. when we act as per our pravritti or when we act in a in, in mode of goodness we are generally acting as per our pravritti but when typically we are acting in mode of passion or mode of ignorance we are mostly acting as per our vasanas so the lord is what he is trying to say to arjuna is see every action you can you can divide into these three parts where he will divide as gyanam and then he will divide it as uh, uh, karma performer uh, performer as karta and karma means the action itself and then he will explain that all these activities i will give you examples how they are in mode of goodness how they are in mode of passion and how they are in mode of ignorance so he will he will give that example so for example arjuna was not willing to fight isn't it so the lord is trying to say that your your decision of not willing to fight is actually is more inspired by the modes rather than uh, the sanction of the supreme lord now in 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 case of arjuna lord krishna himself was the sanctioner so that's what he was trying to explain to arjuna that acting according to your own ideas is actually is like acting as per a uh, mode of passion or mode of ignorance so that is how he is he is first of all uh, discussing the topic of action he is dividing this uh, action into various constituents he is dividing into motivation he is dividing into constituents when you do the action then he is summarizing these six parts into three and then goes on to explain that how each of these three uh, three items of action are uh, uh, are affected by modes of nature uh, goodness passion and ignorance <clears throat> so that's that's how he is trying to do explain it to arjuna it's a very analytical explanation by the lord uh, it's a very uh, i would say technical kind of an explanation does that make life little bit more easier now yes prabhu yes prabhu yes, prabhu thank you i want to give this explanation See, yeah. you are given six factors. Yeah. The six factors are <coughs> jnanam, nyayam, parigyata, karnam, karma, karta, and karnam. Mm -hmm. So there are these six factors are given. Out of this, of mm -hmm. course, 
you have to bring them as you said they are connected with the you have to connect them with the more of nature with yeah. the lord as yeah. you say yeah. more of nature is other part of the lord yeah okay so here the nyayam and the jnanam the nyayam and the parijnata and karta are same karta same so that becomes one mm-hmm. okay and uh, this uh, nyayam you know nyayam and uh, this karnam. karnam the senses you know karnam. they have nothing to do with the uh, i mean they have uh, nothing modes to do. of nature yeah so they have nothing to do they are instruments practically you know that object of knowledge you know that mm-hmm. has practically the object of you can't say the object of knowledge the mode of goodness or whatever yeah. it is yeah that. yeah so yeah. so this uh, nyayam, nyayam and uh, this uh, karnam also get uh, deleted So correct. the remaining three are being taken. Gyanam, is, uh, correct. This, this, uh, Gyanam, karma yeah. and karta. Yeah. You're right. That is, uh, That's Gyanam how we analyzed it. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice. 13, 14 had five actions. Correct. What we discussed just one, yeah. one question below. And now five becomes six. And again six becomes three. No, no, no. No, no. Had. no the, the, the five factors actually that is a different way of classifying action. Okay. Different way. And, and this okay. six, this six is a different way of classifying the uh, uh, the 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 topic of action. Uh, uh, that one is mainly to highlight the role of the Paramatma. Here, uh, here it is more to highlight the role of the modes of nature. Okay, <clears throat> okay, okay. So that's how they have uh, analyzed it. Okay, bro. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We are taking quite some time. I I don't know. 25 questions describe knowledge in mode of goodness passion and ignorance this is easier so can somebody answer this 20 mode of passion mode of goodness knowledge in mode of goodness yes there is one spirit in every living being or every entity yeah 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 very good and mode of passion so i think different entity in different body no separate soul uh body is soul yeah body is soul yeah 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 okay and mode of ignorance knowledge body limited to body. knowledge limited to body only body only huh? so now can can somebody explain this by an example some some real life example <clears throat> see mode of goodness knowledge in mode of goodness means when the person sees the other person depending upon the consciousness of the person say see the undivided spiritual nature in all beings he doesn't he uh, he doesn't differentiate people between between different people based upon are you black are you white are you small are you big are you rich are you poor are you for example hindu muslim sikh isai whatever he doesn't differentiate between the designation of the person he differentiate no, between, designation correct he, dif- he, di- he does he differentiate the person based on the good based on the consciousness of the person are you a sadhu are you a asadhu uh, means uh, are you in goodness are you acting in goodness are you acting although he understand that all the living beings are actually the part and parcel of the lord but because they are in different different type of bodies the modes affect different different differently so although he sees the spirit spiritual nature same but he recognizes them as per their consciousness uh, for example uh, for example a hindu person looking at maybe a muslim person now a person in mode of goodness will will does not recognize that he is a muslim what he will see is how how loving this person is towards god that is looking as based on consciousness based on what the inner consciousness of the person is he will not see that oh you are a muslim or maybe you are a christian then you are certain certain type no he will not look like that he will rate that person based upon for example like we say in cricket team so if are you selecting a player based on his talent how much how good a batsman he is or are you selecting a person from which state he is coming from or for from which association is coming from is is he coming from my state from from maybe karnataka then maybe he is a good batsman or uh, if he is really scoring runs something like that so knowledge in goodness means see the undivided spiritual nature in all beings so these kind of people differentiate people based on their 
internal development spiritual development i would say and knowledge and passion is actually oh he is a hindu he is a muslim or maybe uh, he is from karnataka he is from up up walas are all bhaiyas and up walas are all uh, nonsense people something like that so that is knowledge and passion and knowledge and ignorance is knowledge <laughs> limited only to the body <coughs> knowledge limited only to the body eating mating sleeping and defending से मुझे खाना मिल जाए मेरी भूख मिट जाए और मुझे सोने को मिल जाए बस मुझे और कुछ नहीं चाहिए दैट्स व्हाट नॉलेज इन इग्नोरेंस मींस उसका जैसे लाइक द चिल्ड्रन आर देयर स्मॉल चिल्ड्रन देयर होल वर्ल्ड इज अराउंड ईटिंग ओनली दे गेट मिल्क दे फील हंगरी दे क्राई दे गेट मिल्क दे आर ओके लाइक दैट तो सिमिलर दीज पीपल आर ओनली लिमिटेड टू बॉडी ओनली एंड से फॉर एग्जाम्पल मनी इज एवरी Uh, by hook or crook if we get money that is fine it doesn't matter uh, how are we getting it uh, in in what way we are getting it it doesn't matter so that is knowledge in that is knowledge in ignorance for example shakuni would be an example of knowledge in ignorance by hook and crook we just have to make my uh, nephew duryodhan the king of hastinapur it doesn't matter if i have to kill pandavas by burning them by cheating them by insulting them doesn't matter to me that is knowledge in ignorance <clears throat> okay <clears throat> so describe happiness in mode of goodness passion and ignorance 38 and 39 so we jumped quite some verses here because it was quite a lot <clears throat> so happiness in goodness is something destroys sorrow is it poison in the beginning but nectar at the end mm, very good yeah, yeah. Uh, awaken self realization very nice mm-hmm. and happiness in passion i think appears nectar at beginning but it is a poison at <coughs> end you feel very happy at uh, uh, beginning but poison at end correct and in ignorance it is again delusion from beginning till end actually yes, laziness correct. sleeping correct. correct 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 so happiness in goodness comes by practice it comes practice. by abhyas <laughs> Uh, so for example you want to gain good health you have to do practice you have to go for a morning walk do some exercise play some sports so when you do that you feel good it is poison in the beginning you have to toil hard but nectar in the end good health is there uh, i feel better now i feel really nice from inside energetic from inside that is happiness in goodness it awakens self realization you feel ex- inspired all the good feelings are there happiness in passion means nectar in the beginning poison in the end which means sense gratification i eat a lot i enjoy now i enjoy the rasgulla i enjoy the chola bhatura but in the end i my stomach gets upset i get sick whatever so it is nectar in the beginning poison in the end it is based on impermanent sense gratification uh, like uh, lord krishna mentioned in i think uh, chapter number 5 yehi sansparsh ja bhoga दुख योनया एवते दुख योनया दुख योनया मींस द मोमेंट यू कांटेक्ट विद द सेंसेस इट इज दुख योनया यू आर प्रेग्नेंट विद डिस्ट्रेस इन द एंड यू विल गेट डिस्ट्रेस लाइक अ लेडी व्हेन शी गेट्स प्रेग्नेंट शी हैज टू डिलीवर व्हाटएवर इट मे बी आफ्टर 9 मंथ्स शी हैज टू डिलीवर सिमिलरली द मोमेंट यू डू सेंस एंजॉयमेंट यू हैव टू डिलीवर एंड व्हाट इज द डिलीवरी विल बी इट विल बी डिस्ट्रेस so happiness in ignorance is it is delusion in the beginning and distressful throughout throughout distressful so this is based on delusion means they don't know what is right what is wrong and they do all kind of whimsical things and it is all together distressful at least there is some happiness in passion at least in the beginning but here there is no happiness at all okay <clears throat> who is freed from three modes of material nature no one no one wow parsarthi no prabhu no one wonderful Nobody. so with so confidence he is saying no <laughs> one <laughs> yes no one so this is this is actually one of the one of the practical lessons from bhagavad gita we are helplessly bound by our nature uh, so uh, again and again uh, the natural tendency of living entity 
in this material world is to degrade its consciousness the natural tendency of the living entity in this material world is that it leads the path or it follows naturally follows the path of degrading consciousness uh, uh, so that is why why and and which, why it happens because modes of material nature if you remember in chapter number 14 or in chapter number 4 uh, lord krishna answers arjuna that uh, sa kalena mahata yogo nashtah parantapa sa kalena mahata yogo nashtah parantapa what does it mean that i had given this knowledge to sun god vivaswan the knowledge of yoga i had given to sun god vivaswan but okay. in due course of time it got destroyed so so that the the work of time in this material world is to destroy not only destroy our bodies but the natural tendency is to destroy our consciousness also it degrades from mode of goodness to passion to passion to ignorance and why the knowledge of bhagavad gita is important it tells us the importance that how helplessly bound we are from modes of material nature and by, what do we do with this knowledge what do we do with this knowledge with this knowledge we have to understand how to counter these modes how to counter these modes is to act as per the direction of the lord which is given in bhagavad gita satatam kirtayanto mam yeah. uh, sangam tyaktva sangam tyaktva means leave bad association do good association eat krishna prasad and associate with devotees so this is this is all this is all telling you that we are helplessly bound by modes maya is acting on us all the time and unless and until we take to these spiritual practices we take to some yoga practice which is i'm uh, saying at spiritual practice we will act as per modes and this is going to degrade our consciousness and we will act in sinful ways this so is what you, uh, yes sorry 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 yes. sorry this is just complete sir no no boliye boliye mai ho chuka no no sorry i just interrupted but i i in the purport it is also written that there is no being existing either here or among the demigods mm. so even demigods are also not freed yes. uh, of this material so that Very. example which you are giving of uh. the sun god it, it 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 is the same correct it apply is it applicable to him yeah. that he never he, transferred he, these uh, uh, learnings of gita no no it doesn't mean that it means mm-hmm. that uh, the emphasis of the point was that the knowledge was given long ago hmm. but somehow it got lost so the emphasis was mainly that the knowledge uh, the yoga knowledge can actually get lost also for example uh, like uh, uh, in this material world we have this experience uh, that water naturally flows towards uh, uh, from high level to low level isn't it correct i mean you are engineer i mean even if you are not an engineer Uh, everyone knows yeah, that yeah, if you yeah. want to if you want to raise the water to a height you have to use a pump correct isn't it similarly consciousness in this material world goes from goodness to towards ignorance that is the natural flow for that entity who doesn't do any yoga who doesn't do any kind of effort to prevent that consciousness from degrading jo koi prayas nahi karega uski chetna ka vinash hi hona hai ye swabhavik hai this is very natural mm-hmm. and that is what it means and when you say demigods also are affected now you might have read about this stories of indra mm, correct uh, indra sometimes sends apsaras for uh, uh, tapasya uh, of vishwamitra vishwamitra ka tapasya bang karne ke liye apsara ko bhej rahe kyon kyunki he fears that my throne will be disturbed mm. and he's so he is acting in mode of passion even lord brahma is also uh, subjected to these three modes of material nature so no one except the lord no one except uh, the lord or pure devotees of the lord are and are free from modes of material nature just to add it is uh, krishna summarizes it in 714 no? mm-hmm. eshi devi esha devi Eish, guname mam maya duratya correct mameb he propadyante the only medicine is that correct yes prabhu very nice that's exactly the words where lord krishna says that unless and until you come to my surrender difficult to overcome the modes 
difficult to overcome the modes so what it means for all practical purposes it means that it starts to some yoga process immediately if you want to counter these modes if you want to counter these modes you start a yoga process and the yoga process recommended by the lord is bhakti yoga <coughs> does that make sense does very nice prabhu very huh? nice okay yes. so i'm trying to make it very simple and maybe little down to earth so that the uh, the message of these verses become translatable into practical application uh, so that is the uh, idea <clears throat> okay we have achieved only 11 questions what are the qualities of a brahmana okay b b self control <laughs> okay austerity purity yeah, the, the purity. religiousness is yeah 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 so prabhu ji yeah so d is actually having this uh, labor which is mainly for the the shudra shudra class the uh, the mm -hmm. labor class b uh, so, so the the right answer here is self control austerity mm. purity knowledge mm. wisdom honesty religiousness yes, yes. so mm. these are the, these are the qualities what about of a, a prabhu resourcefulness a mataji is a quality for kshatriyas that is what i see kshatriya okay. that is in the batch that is batch kshatriya so kshatriyas kshatriyas right. like to acquire mm. kingdom kingdom land uh, for example a manager like to boast i have 40 people working under me resourceful right that is kshatriya that is a feeling of uh, kind of a uh, say controllership ishwar bhav that is that has to be there in kshatriya that controllership nature has to be there because in this world we need managers we need managers who will see to it that things get done properly so kshatriya under the guidance of a proper brahmana will actually be the best combination so resourcefulness is actually is is for kshatriyas a courage is again for kshatriyas actually a yeah, and b only, only resourcefulness and religious otherwise a is also okay yeah. only thing is resourcefulness that is a part yeah. of uh, kshatriya yeah yeah religiousness would mean like performing your uh, uh, daily nitya karmas for example sandhya uh, vandan aarti okay. japa uh, that is something which is religiousness <clears throat> so the correct answer was b so these are brahmanical qualities what is meant by swa karmana tam abhyarcha b worship the lord with duties according to one's yeah b okay okay uh, work Three cannot correct. so work is worship <laughs> work is worship uh, so why why work is worship not it, this does not mean work is worship what is problem with work is worship how will you say if somebody says work is worship how will you counter that argument the lord did not do that to render ha huh, sorry worshiping the lord with duties according to us there we are worship the lord huh. here the lord is we are not mentioned lord at all only work is worship that's all okay that yes, is so that is uh, you are using sanskrit to defend your answer but philosophically how will you uh, <laughs> so worship you... worship uh, worship gives a spiritual progress uh -huh. whereas work does not give spiritual progress however well you do it so work is not quite equal to worship in any which way even if it is best then okay okay, okay. no i could think work mode of passion work... Yeah. Uh, yes sita ji yes yes it could be in a mode of passion so i do my i do my work but i'm not you know give, attaching or, or uh, surrendering my action to the lord something like that yeah see working in passion is not necessarily always bad for example like i said courageousness or resourcefulness so these people <laughs> have that controllership but if they are uh utilizing that resourceful nature of their in the in the service of the lord or in a in a proper way then that is okay but but uh, my question is what is wrong with this philosophy work is worship prabhupad used to give a very witty answer to that so prabhupad would say as... yeah yes mani ji i was just saying your work should be as per your prescribed duties hmm. uh that's okay so so that so that is why i think that is missing here the work is yeah, that is that is one one way of countering it yeah that is correct 
prescribed okay. duties is is one one uh, prescribed yeah. duties means karma karma means uh, the duties yeah. prescribed as per the scripture yeah so that is a good answer okay. actually that is that is the right answer and work is worship the problem is what just manish ji said and prabhupar used to mean anything yeah prabhupar used to respond to that kind of an argument is that uh, if work is worship then the donkey will be the greatest worshiper <laughs> because it works very 24 true, hours very, a day correct correct so that's how he would he would in a in a very witty way and and you can say that maybe a prostitute can also say that i'm wor- working very hard uh, to satisfy my customer so i am also doing worship and the butcher may also say that i'm i'm cutting these animals uh, in a very nice way that is also worship so that is uh, so the idea is the karma has to be prescribed it should not be it should be as per the scriptural direction and uh, it should be done in a in a in a in a way of a gratitude that these qualities that i am using are actually coming to me by the lord by the grace of the lord if you see this 46th verse yatah pravarti bhuta nam yen sarvam idam tatam so he is saying by worship of the lord and how the lord has been described here who is the source of all beings and who is all pervading so he is saying who is the source of all beings so when the sadhak understand that whatever talent he has got actually is coming from the lord and when he is performing that work he should feel grateful that i am able to do this duty because the lord has given me this talent so that is by your work worship the lord by your work worship the lord so understanding that these qualities i am having you are an engineer for example so you should be grateful or we should be grateful that uh the talent of analyzing things uh, evaluating things actually we have obtained from the supreme lord and when we do this uh, activity when we are doing some engineering activity we should be grateful that we are able to do it only because we have got this talent and when this gratitude feeling is coming in our heart actually that means work is worship uh, then our work becomes like a worship <clears throat> okay so correct answer is worship the lord with duties according to one's nature or prescribed duties okay on what basis should one decide his occupational duty personal gain honesty determination mm-hmm. modes of nature one's determination d one's determination one's mode of nature yeah, one's mode determination of mode of nature mode of, mode of, nature. Mode of nature means if you are in passion or passion goodness then better to take kshatriya kind of activities if you are in goodness better to take brahmanical activities oh, oh, yeah. so shreyan swadharmo guna ha shreyan swadharmo b once honesty b nahi prabhu ji honesty is something which is a uh, 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 say honesty is not the 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 verdict of verse number 47 uh, the honesty the brahmana can be an honest person the shudra can be an honest person uh, the kshatriya can be an honest person and maybe uh, a, a vaishya can also be an honest person so that is possible but when you take to some activity that purely cannot be dependent upon honesty that has to be dependent upon the modes of nature the prakriti that you have been given the prakriti the the kind of a talent you have been given the pravritti that you have the inclination that you have the propensity that you have so some people have propensity to study yeah. to read those are brahmanical tendencies some people have the propensity or tendency to rule to govern to fight to protect these are kshatriya tendencies so these are natural tendencies which are given to us by the will of the lord uh, and we should recognize them uh, we should try to understand them we should do a self evaluation awareness and accordingly we should decide our occupational duty this is also very much related to the career counseling part in bhagavad gita say if you see that movie three idiots where uh, this topic has been raised in this movie where a person who likes to do photography his parents are pushing him to do go for engineering where he will actually may do engineering but uh, he will not enjoy it for rest of his life so the message of the film was that whatever you like whatever you are competent at what you are skillful at better to take that occupation for your life and then you will feel you will feel materially satisfied 
when you are feeling materially satisfied then only on that platform you can think of building spiritual progress so that is why varnashram system is very important which help us recognize the talent engage the person in that talent so the society is benefited because uh, they are getting a good skillful talented person and the person is also benefited because he feels satisfied when the person feels satisfied on that platform only spiritual progress can be built so that is the whole idea of varnashram system and that is the main uh, idea here where lord krishna is uh, telling us how should we decide our occupational duty according to our swabhava according to our swadharma gunas according to our qualities thank uh, you so the correct answer is mode of nature <clears throat> Okay, what should be one's approach towards work? One is performing, born out of his nature, but full of faults. Should discontinue. Should take step to purify. Should be determined to perform the work for the satisfaction of the Lord. Should better search for some work where there is no contamination possible. C. C. What should be C. Yeah. C. Okay. So every C. activity. Yeah. C, C is the correct answer. So every activity is. Uh, bound with some kind of fault for example in a kshatriya uh, for a soldier he may have to kill and killing is not a pleasant work uh, a, 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 a vaishya or a businessman may sometime have to hide his profit because he want to sell things at a reasonable profit so he may not disclose the profit openly uh, when he may be uh, files for a tender in some company he cannot say that okay he is earning that much profit so which gives the which gives a, uh, ideas to the competitor and he can actually manipulate so the the vaishya cannot be outrightly honest i mean uh, in in those kind of dealings so he has to work uh, smartly to but yet honestly uh, with good intentions but he has to work in a in a more practicable way where where he can uh, do things so sometimes he may have to he may have to hide hide his profit so the point here is the lord is saying that sometimes in all of these activities you may have to do some work which you may not like but still continue to do that work because that is according to your nature that will keep you satisfied that will keep you motivated and on that motivation level you can build upon your spiritual journey more easily more nicely for example uh, people who are uh, not able to or who have a desire for sense gratification like sex desire so what is the shastric way of dealing with it okay you enter into the constitution or institution of marriage you uh, you regulate that desire and then in the grahastha then do the spiritual activity that is why grahastha is not simply known as grahastha is it is known as grahastha ashram ashram means the spiritual culture should be foremost but in a grahastha you have some license of sense gratification but that is mainly to satisfy your uh, bodily needs your uh, maybe your modes of nature should be satisfied in a shastric way in a dharmic way but ultimately you have to make it an ashram you have to lead to spiritual progress that is how uh, the varnashram system works hope that is clear it is making sense Yes, yes, Prabhu. Okay. E, yes, yes. So one should be determined to perform the work for the satisfaction of the Lord is the right answer. So another ten to go. What does the word Brahma Bhuta means? Becoming one with the absolute. Becoming yeah. one with the absolute. With the absolute. Yeah. Brahman is the okay. No, that is not the so correct answer. Is C becoming Brahm becoming one with the absolute? C. Yeah. So becoming one with the absolute means what? maybe another question uh, we have i think 18th question on that we'll discuss there uh, which of the following is correct for brahma bhuta stage so what do you mean by brahma bhuta stage fully joyful neither laments or desires equally disposed towards all living entities all of the above all of the above, above. yeah all so above. when when we are doing spiritual exercises spiritual practices these are the symptoms that we get initial in the initial stages we start to become happy we don't we don't become morose we don't become depressed easily 
we we don't have unnecessary desires for hankering hankering desires we don't have them and we become disposed equally disposed towards all living entities so this is the initial platform which is known as brahma bhuta stage so lord krishna in 54th verse is saying that from this stage <clears throat> from the brahma bhuta stage you can take the jump towards bhakti where he is mentioning the regular or the conventional path towards bhakti uh, uh, varnashram system in the varnashram system you do nishkam karma yoga in the nishkam karma yoga you purify yourself you become equally disposed toward all living entities then you reach brahma bhuta stage and then uh, do gyan and then you can jump to the uh, the bhakti yoga stage correct answer is all of the above 18th what is meant by vishate tadanantaram so this is continuation a, with the 16th question a river flowing into the uh, ocean i pick him one to the ocean yeah so now i i trapped parsarthi prabhu in this question <laughs> i trapped him. on mentors in the kingdom of god uh, with this hindu jati intact yes yes prabhu so this is that is the whole idea of this question uh so becoming one with the brahman doesn't mean that you become homogeneously one so like like uh, uh, river is flowing into the ocean you become one with the ocean there is no distinction between now the river and the ocean no it is it doesn't mean that vishate tadanantaram doesn't mean that so vishate tadanantaram means one enters into the kingdom of god with its individuality intact and the example we give is in the vaishnav parampara the example given is like a green parrot entering into a tree and sitting on the branch so if you see from a distance you will not be able to distinguish between the parrot and the tree because both are green so you will see that they are actually become one they are becoming equal but if you are if you are coming close to the tree if you are coming close to the tree if you are coming close to the tree then you can see okay that is the parrot and that is the tree so the individuality of the soul is not lost the soul still remains the soul and the parmatma still remains the parmatma it doesn't mean that the soul becomes the parmatma because that is the next inference people start to derive when they say uh, one becoming one becoming one people start to infer what i have become god main bhagwan ho gaya hu that is the inference they start to derive which is a very dangerous inference because our relationship with the lord is always a relationship of the se- sevak or or a servant when you say i have become the lord that relationship is gone so we need to understand that uh, the the relationship aspect remains un- continuously eternally it is never lost so vishate tadanantaram means one enters into the kingdom of god with his individuality intact so you don't lose that individuality individuality which is actually the uh, purport of uh, river flowing into the ocean and becoming one with the ocean so that is not correct correct answer is one enters into the kingdom of god with his individuality intact 19th what is the meaning of word mad vyapashraya <clears throat> under the protection of okay. the lord prabhu ji yeah. under the protection of the lord very nice prabhu ji very nice so this verse comes where lord krishna is now have completed the explanation that how by varnashram you to gyan yoga stage from gyan yoga to now you are brahma bhuta and brahma bhuta you now jump to bhakti now here uh, in 56 verse he has started to explain bhakti as an independent process as a swatantra prakriya a uh, independent process so there he saying uh, if you work uh, under my protection Shah. if you work under my protection mad vyapashraya sorry pese yeah so the here the word vyap mad vyapashraya means under the protection of the supreme lord and i was explaining that uh, that though engaged in all kind of activities sarva karmani sada kurvan sarva karmanya pi sada kurvano mad vipashraya so you do all kind of activities you you do shudra activities you do vaishya activity you do kshatriya activity you do brahmana activity but do under my protection 
under my guidance following my instruction then mat prasadat ab aap noti shashvatam padam abhyayam then by my mercy my prasad i will take care ha uh, tum mere hisab se chaloge chinta mat karo mere mere camp mein aa jaoge ha uh, shashvatam padam abhyayam you will be getting eternal and imperishable abode by my grace by my kripa my prasad so that is mad vyapashra here the lord has started explaining the process of bhakti in the, as an independent process so that is the that is why the word is important and the word mad vyapashraya is particularly important to understand that concept <clears throat> what happens if one does not work under the direction of supreme lord so we have been discussing this uh, The, then he is compelled to act by the modes of material nature yeah so he will uh, act according to yeah. his uh, vasanas or no. whatever he will act according to his own whims and fancies and that may not be helpful because that will be bounding uh, ka- karmic reactions will be there <clears throat> so what is the practical application so we we don't have supreme lord in our lives we every time we want to take a decision lord, lord is not there so how do we understand uh, what is what is meant by under the direction of supreme lord so working under the direction of supreme lord means what for practical reasons following the scriptures or to you be can take the thing from your spiritual guru yeah. according yeah. to the scriptures so work according to the direction of scriptures, scriptures work under the direction of spiritual master so the uh, so the the topic of spiritual master spiritual. is a is a vast topic maybe now we have completed bhagavad gita maybe we can take some time later on uh, to discuss this at length what does spiritual master actually means does the person who initiate us who gives us diksha is he only the spiritual master or there are other other ways also to understand the the meaning of guru or the meaning of uh, spiritual master so uh, but but for for now uh, direction of scriptures and direction of spiritual master is a is a good a, good a, enough reason to understand what is meant by direction of supreme lord <laughs> summarize the main points of verses 61 and 62 and the purports so 61 and 62 is the verse where we starts discussing about ishvara sarva bhutanam hridesha arjuna tishtati bhramayan sarva bhutani yantra rodhani mayaya and then uh, तमेव शरण गच्छ सर्व भावेन भारत तत्सादा परा शांति स्थानम प्राप्सि शाश्वत सो एनी ब्रेव सोल वुड लाइक टू अटेम दिस प्रभु आई कैन ट्राई प्लीज प्रभु सो द सुप्रीम लॉर्ड इज सिचुएटेड इन एवरी वन हार्ट एंड इज डायरेक्टिंग द वॉन्ड्रिंग्स ऑफ ऑल द लिविंग एंटिटीज हू आर लाइक सीटेड ऑन अ मशीन मेड ऑफ मटेरियल एनर्जी the living entity forgets his past deeds but the super soul as the knower of past present and future remains the witness of all his activities mm-hmm. yeah. yeah and a living entity should therefore surrender to supreme lord to get relieved from all kinds of miseries of this material existence mm. and finally reach the abode of the lord yeah so this question has connection with the the previous question 60 what happens if one does not work under the direction of supreme lord so the lord says if you don't work under my direction you will be working according to the modes of nature now hearing this arjuna might think that modes of nature are actually the supreme so here in 61st verse lord krishna clarifies it that whatever body the living entity gives is is uh, it is being obtained by the living entity by the modes of material nature by prakriti's prakriti arranges that body and that prakriti actually is under my control so you should not get into this illusion that swabhava or prakriti is actually topmost topmost is still the parmatma or the ishvara who is situated in the body and who is went guiding the wanderings of the living entity and uh, instructing the prakriti instructing the material mm-hmm. nature uh, what kind of body he should give so that is the main point of 61 and 62. the living entity is not at all independent yeah the living entity is not independent he yes. seated in this body which is not fully under the control of material nature and he himself is controlled by the supreme lord so you remember that picture where lord krishna is on the top then there is a lady like a puppeteer she is 
holding strings of uh, yes. uh, the yeah. goodness, passion, ignorance, and then the living entity is being showing as dancing according to that. So, so the dancing according to that material nature is verse number sixteen. So, if you don't act according to my direction, you will act according to the modes. But <clears throat> understand that modes are not supreme. I am still the supreme because modes work under my direction. That is what the main point here in sixty-one and sixty-two. So, Lord is sitting within His heart, directing all His wanderings. One should stop one's futile endeavor to be independent and take shelter of the Lord. So, that is the main uh, purport of this sixty-one and sixty-two. That don't act as out of ahankar. Always feel subordinate towards the Lord because He is actually the master, the supreme master. that will make one peaceful and eligible to attain the supreme abode okay what is the most confidential part of the knowledge given by the lord to arjuna <clears throat> 65 so this is manmana bhav mat bhakto madhyaji maam namaskuru maame vaishyasi satyam te prati jane priyo sine so this 65 verse comes when the lord says sarva ghuya tamam bhuya shrunu me paramam vacha now here my most topmost instruction most confidential instruction and what is that become my devotee make always my devotee listen me do always. what i say yeah follow always. me always yes so the correct answer here is both is both a and b both a and b oh, yeah. and then comes the 66th what type of religion needs to be given up what should be accepted instead <laughs> we sh- we should leave all the religions and go to his sharan only yeah but what type of religion come to my sharan <clears throat> yeah don't worry and i will make you all free from all the sins you think of just follow me actually but what are those type of religion <clears throat> Krishna has described in various chapters mm. of Bhagavad Gita about karma yoga, jnana yoga, ashtanga yoga. Yeah. About and then he has talked about uh, this uh, jnana yoga mm. and varna ashrama dharma, sannyasa, yoga, sense control, mind control. Like so all these things have been talked. These are all the various uh, topics of dharma yeah. which he has talked. Yeah. And uh, these are all the <laughs> things. And uh, we should. I mean, get out of that and find it. He definitely he has come to bhakti yoga. Correct. But uh, he say all these things. If you I mean, you kindly leave it and surrender unto me. Yeah. That is what I is I feel is that. Yeah. Now in conclusion, Lord says, "I do not give up all such karmas and are pass of attaining him and Correct. simply surrender to Krishna." Yeah. So the point is like uh, if you read the purport of Shila Prabhupada, he has uh, given all that. knowledge of supreme brahman knowledge of super soul knowledge of different orders and statuses of life which is varnashram knowledge of renounced order of life which is sanyas karma sanyas uh, then knowledge of non attachment this is karma yoga uh, sense and mind control meditation this is something like dhyan yoga mind control meditation so according to devotional process one should simply accept such religious principles that will lead ultimately to the devotional service of the lord so when the lord says sarva dharman parityajya he is actually and and then mamekam sharanam vaja what is trying to say is that all these processes that i have given oh, to you uh, they are useless unless and until they are directed towards me so uh, uh, unless and then he says that if you simply surrender to me and continue to do these processes Uh, so that it brings to brings you to me then it is okay and then one may perform particular occupational duty according to his position in the social order but if by executing his duty one does not come to the point of krishna consciousness all his activities are in vain so this is something from the uh, previous chapter where the lord has explained the meaning of word om tat sat uh, so here he there he gives uh, uh faith in various modes uh and then he says that ultimately it has to be om tat sat it has to be done for the satisfaction of the supreme so <clears throat> unless we do that all our endeavors are futile there there is no 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 big big deal so if you are acting as a good father 
but simply acting as a good father may bring some purification to you but ultimately you have to channelize that uh, uh, duty uh, towards the towards the lord towards krishna <clears throat> effect of hearing gita what was the effect of arjuna uh, on arjuna on hearing bhagavad gita became free from illusion regained his understanding of right and wrong became ready to do krishna's will all of the above all of the above yes so karishye vachanam tava that was the statement that arjuna gave and karishye vachanam tava is the call of gita that act according to the direction of the lord and then you will make spiritual progress and then we have some hope to meet the lord at some time in our eternal journey sometime so karishye vachanam tava so all this he could say that only because he understood the gita he understood what is right and wrong and then he was became ready to do krishna's will what was the effect on sanjaya after hearing bhagavad gita he took pressure and re- rejoiced again and again again and yeah. again yeah he became a scholar he took pressure, pressure and re- rejoiced again and again ha huh? hrishyami cha punha punha hrishyami cha muhur muhu hrishyami cha punha punha and hrishyami cha muhu his is having a good time there is really enjoying the discourse uh, going on the battlefield probably dhritarash dhritarash is worrying a lot and uh, sanjay is enjoying it like anything so correct yeah, answer is, is uh, i remember <laughs> again and again and i feel happy again and again yeah all that <laughs> yeah hrishyami <laughs> cha puna puna and hrishyami cha muhur muhu okay the final question so we made it what is the opinion of sanjay after hearing bhagavad gita arjuna is a supreme archer combination of krishna and arjuna is bound to bring success arjuna is a great yogi krishna is the master of all mystics krishna is the master of all mystics we the combination of we krishna and arjuna is yeah 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 yatra yogeshwar krishna yatra partho dhanurdra tatra shrir vijay aur putir dhruvar nitir matir mama So the, the, the stress is mainly wherever there is krishna and wherever there is supreme archer arjuna please that is my opinion that there yes. will be victory there will be power there will be morality and that's all there will be opulence so that's what sanjaya says so the stress is that whenever we have in our life krishna's instructions always okay. and we have submissive exactly. attitude of arjuna we have krishna's instruction to follow and we have a following attitude like arjuna then our life will is bound to bring success to us there will be opulence there will be vijaya there will be bhuti uh, there will be power there will be niti there will be morality everything will be there so these two things are the uh, recipe of success and in uh, sanjay actually finally answers dhritarashtra uh, question kim akurvat sanjaya kim akurvat sanjaya means sanjaya is now saying that i have no doubt my opinion is uh, there will be victory on the pandava side that 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 will that is going to be the result of this war so the combination of krishna and arjuna is bound to bring success so that brings up the end and conclusion of this uh, big quiz 25 questions i hope that was useful and uh, really appreciate uh, for those uh, many of those devotees who have taken the time and uh, effort to complete this i hope you have gained by this exercise in my feedback questionnaire which i have recently uh, sent to everybody i forgot to put this question how is your opinion about quizzes or the workshop do you think we should continue with this exercise going forward after uh, geeta is completed now very much prabhu very much very much prabhu Okay. Yes, we we should continue. Okay, good. So this is very important. It's very useful. Okay. We should continue this way. Okay, sir. Thank you very much. So <clears throat> uh, next next week we will have a uh, Ishta Goshti. Ishta Goshti means uh, uh, in Vaishnav of Parlance it means uh, coming together to discuss uh, spiritual subject matter. So we have issued a feedback form on the sessions classes we have already. organized so far and many of you have submitted your opinion and your feedback i am really grateful to all of you
those who have not been able to do it kindly do them uh, in case you think you want to give some negative feedback or you might not want to share your identity that is also fine uh, our idea is mainly to hear hear your views uh, if you want to disclose your identity and still give the feedback that is also acceptable and uh, uh, we will have discussion on each of those feedback points uh, where i will try to respond to each of those feedback points or try to share my uh, understanding and then we also like to do some one practical uh, question on bhagavad gita chapter 18 and shloka memorization uh, one shloka memorization from chapter 18 so uh, kindly join us uh, next week for that uh, discussion and uh, workshop on practical application and shloka memorization so thanks a lot all glory to shrimad bhagavad gita all glory to shrila prabhupad any questions that you may have maybe we can take one or two questions uh, another 5 minutes and then we'll close it Looks like uh, Prabhu ji, one question. Uh, yes, Prabhu. So uh, when Vidura makes that statement that when Krishna and Arjuna come together, there will be uh, prosperity, power, everything, success, mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. um, Sanjaya. Uh, Sanjaya, right? Yeah. So um, it looks a little materialistic in nature, right? Because I would have preferred, uh, after hearing all the narration, uh, I would have preferred him saying he will reach the abode of Krishna, right? Uh huh. Yeah, so, so so probably you might have thought about materialistic because opulence is there. The word opulence, correct? Right. Power. So there are uh, things which are a little more materialistic in nature, right? That's that's how I would. Uh, I mean, at first glance, that's that's what it uh, kind of hints at. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I would respond to it, Prabhuji, that uh, uh, as you have been, uh, I mean, discussing this. say money alone is not the cause of material materialistic uh, uh, view point or uh, materialistic nature see uh, we are living in this world so we have to acquire all these things and uh, resources and all these things the, the the point is how are we how are we kind of uh, uh, responding to these resources are we utilizing these resources for sense gratification or are we utilizing these resources for spiritual development so opulence alone is not bad like uh, if you see in in vedic perspective when we write uh, uh, on our walls sometimes you go to homes in north india it is very popular people write shubh labh before labh they put shubh so the, the the point here is that the purpose is not only to earn money but earn pure money pure money means that comes in mode of goodness so that is something which is there and uh, arjuna was a devotee bhishma was a devotee huh? but these people were dealing with uh, dealing with money dealing with power dealing with uh, 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 administrating the society so opulence uh, power and uh, i would say morality and this uh, uh, all all these all these things uh, uh, that has been mentioned in the last verse uh, does not necessarily mean uh, uh, bad does not necessarily mean materialistic or bad if it, if, if all these things are dovetailed in the service of the lord so because this is being set up the the discussion is being set up in a in a uh, kshatriya kind of background so kshatriya would want power kshatriya would want opulence kshatriya would want morality so that is that is the idea thank you prabhu ji yeah, if if uh, hari krishna yes prabhu ji can i again cite from uh, gurbani gurunane yes prabhu ji say yes. uh, simran seva satsang santosh and then he says kirat kamai and vand chakna mm. the honest sincere mm. income or the kamai of whether material or non material spiritual things and then vand chakna not eat yourself don't keep it with yourself mm. share it with others yeah yeah 
so that's why this last chapter justifies that absolutely yeah. because uh, gurbani is a simplified gita yeah so that's why its base is all gita only yeah, yeah. so naam japna varn chakna kirat kamai these are the three criteria he says you should remember me you should do honest hard work sincere income mm-hmm. and you should share it with others yes sir needy people good good hari krishna thank you yes sir okay <clears throat> so uh, does that satisfy you kishore ji uh, the the response yes prabhu ji okay thank you okay i think uh, then we we take uh, your permission we uh, close the class for the time being and uh, let us once again reconvene uh, next saturday with the discussion on the feedback form and practical application section on chapter 18 thank you very much thanks hare thanks krishna. everyone hare krishna thank you hare krishna hare krishna prabhu ji hare krishna hare krishna hare krishna hare krishna prabhu hare krishna 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 aishman bhavishya sibha vijay hare krishna bolo bolo apna khyal rakhna prabhu kripa bani rahe din raat mashra mara ashirwad चलिए ये पर्सनल वो है थैंक यू जी थैंक यू दिस दिस इज नथिंग अदर वे थैंक यू शिक्षा खत्म हो गई है अभी बाद में आप उस वो जो फिजिकल रिलेशन है ओके मैम उस नाते हां जी ओके प्रभु जी थैंक यू हरे कृष्ण बहुरानी को प्यार बच्चों को अवश्य जी हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण थैंक यू